All right, it's time to put our knowledge of electrostatic forces and fields and potential to the test when we are starting to work with electrical circuits. So in middle school and in grade 10, when we, you would have started working with electrical currents and circuits to, for example, create light bulb circuits, this would have been the first circuit that you would have played around with, which is called a series circuit. You would have been given a battery, some wires, a switch, and a bunch of light bulbs. And one of the first activities would be to see how many light bulbs can you put back to back before it doesn't light up anymore. And you would have come up with a relationship and you would have found that there would have been a, a stopping point after four or five, all of a sudden they don't work anymore. So the objective, the big objective behind this little video is to try to figure out why there is a limit. Why can't I put 10, 20, 30 light bulbs and have them all light up with one battery? Why, why is it limited by a certain amount? Okay, so the big objectives behind this series, uh, series circuit video is first to analyze how it works. How does a current get limited in that circuit? How does a current develop in that circuit? Okay, and how do I use Ohm's law to calculate the total resistance and the current in a circuit based on the voltage of a battery? In order to do that, we've got to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, which you're going to learn. And then using Kirchhoff's voltage law, you can then calculate the total resistance in a series circuit and then go with the potential in the battery to calculate the current. Knowing that, I can then calculate the total power in each of those light bulbs based on the current voltage or resistance in those light bulbs. And that would allow me to calculate whether the light bulb will light up enough. Does it have enough power to light up? Okay, so that's where we're heading. So to begin with, let's talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law in any circuit. In any circuit, okay, the energy that has been used in a chemical reaction to develop a high potential energy storing of charge on this side of the battery, if I close that and I allow that charge to see the other terminal, which is low potential, there'll be a driving force to move the charges through the circuit. And Kirchhoff's voltage law says that whatever that voltage is of that battery, Okay, all of that energy, that, those joules per coulomb that that charge had, is going to be used up as that charge goes through the circuit. And when it gets to the other side, it's going to then have zero energy, all right, where the chemical reaction can then work again to move that charge over here and raise its energy again. Okay, you've seen that in a previous video where we described in general how this works. So Kirchhoff's law says there is conservation of energy, that all the energy that that charge had to begin with is going to be transformed into something else as that charge moves around the circuit. Now that could be light or heat, okay, but all of it is gonna be gone. So if this has nine volts, that charge will be zero volts when it gets to the other side. And the, these little components are gonna spend, those resistors will spend that voltage or that energy, okay? So he says that the algebraic sum of all voltages around a circuit Okay, the battery is the total voltage, but each one of these resistors will have a voltage across them, a potential difference across them. And the sum of V1 plus V2 plus V3 has to be equal to 9 volts. Or 9 volts minus V1 minus V2 and minus V3 will equal to 0. Okay, so the sum of the voltages across, which is basically V1 plus V2 plus V3 minus 9 volts is going to be equal to 0 volts. That's, that's essentially what Kirchhoff's law states, okay? So I need to know that so that then I can rearrange this to say that V1 plus V2 plus V3 is going to be equal to 9 volts, okay? Now what is V in a circuit? Well, V is governed by Ohm's law, which looks like this, okay? So the voltage the voltage around that component is going to be the current going through that component times the resistance of that component, okay? So for example, for V1, it's going to be whatever the current is that this ammeter is showing, the current in that entire circuit, times that resistance of that component, which would be 3 ohms. So V1 is going to be equal to that, okay? And V2 is also going to be equal to the current going through the, the cell or the circuit, times 3 ohms, okay? The current going through the circuit times 3 ohms will be also be V3, okay? And if I substitute that all in here, I'll be able to see that, okay, I 
3 ohms plus I 3 ohms plus I 3 ohms is equal to 9 volts. Okay, and I can then collect like terms, and I would say that, okay, this is all 3I, 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 so 9 ohms I is equal to 9 volts, okay? And then I can rearrange this and say that I is going to be equal to 9 volts divided by 9 ohms, which is going to be equal to 1 ampere, okay? That's just using Kirchhoff's law and Ohm's law, I was able to then substitute this all in here, and I was able to then solve for the current going through that circuit. So let's just break this down. What just happened in here? What just happened in here? This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. And I created a statement using Kirchhoff's voltage law, and then I used Ohm's law to explain what voltage is at that point, and the voltage, or the potential difference across that component, is going to be equal to the current the total current in that series circuit times 3 ohms, okay? Because that's based over here. So I substituted that all in and created a like term, and that allowed me to then find the current, which is 1 ampere, all right? Now, another way of looking at this is just to understand that ah, I can calculate, I can use a rule that comes from this. This comes from everything that just happened here. I can use a rule to calculate what is the total resistance in a series circuit. So this will be R total. So what's the total resistance in a series circuit? If I know the total resistance and I know the initial voltage of the battery, I would then be able to calculate the current directly without doing this complicated middle step over here. So what does that look like? The total resistance in the circuit is going to be equal to, you know, according to what just happened over here, the total resistance of a series circuit is equal to the resistance of each component, the sum of it. So R1 plus R2 plus R3 is going to be the total resistance. So for example, in the circuit above, 10 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 10 ohms is equal to 30 ohms. So my R total is 30 ohms, okay? And then my current, so V divided by our total is going to be my current. So then 9 volts divided by 30 ohms is going to be my current in that circuit. Okay, so 9 volts divided by 30 ohms is that current. So roughly around 0 0.3 amperes is going to be going through that circuit. So if a question asked me, they gave me a series circuit and they said, what is the potential difference across V1? Well, how would I solve that? Well, there's multiple ways I can solve it, but simply I can use Ohm's law. And Ohm's law would say that the current going through the entire circuit, which we just calculated, times the resistance of that individual component, which is 10 ohms, is going to give me the answer. So then 9 volts divided by 30 ohms, because that is what the current is, times 10 ohms is going to be equal to, so 10, the ratio of 10, whatever the resistance of this, divided by the total resistance, which was, which was 30 ohms, okay, that's one third, I will have three volts, okay? And then likewise for V2, it's the same thing. I times 10 ohms, so the total current in that circuit, times 10 ohms, because this is the expression for the current, times 10 ohms is going to be equal to 3 volts. And V3 is, again, exactly the same thing. Okay, by doing this, we just found a pretty simple relationship to calculate the voltage anywhere on a series circuit. Okay, using this relationship that we just saw over here, another thing you can do, another little trick, if I wanted to tr figure out what the voltage is here at that component, okay, the voltage is going to be equal to, okay, so for example, vo voltage at your component is going to be equal to V total times 
the resistance of the component divided by the total resistance, okay? Because this gives me my ratio. The ratio of the component to the total resistance times the total voltage will give me the voltage up across that component, okay? And that's what we just did over here. So just to summarize here, if I want to calculate the total resistance in a series circuit, the total resistance is just add all them up that are in series, R1 plus R2 plus R3, okay? And then using that total resistance, I can then calculate the current going through each individual one, which is gonna be the total voltage divided by the total resistance gives me that current, okay? And then I can calculate the voltage across each of these using Ohm's law or using this cool little relationship that we created using Ohm's law, all right? It's just finding the total, the ratio of the total resistance that each component has and multiplying it by the total voltage. So the last thing I wanted to do in this video is to figure out how we can use all the things that we just calculated to determine the power output at each of these. How many watts is going through this in the circuit? Okay, so power is a measure of watts, which is joules per second. And if I looked at that, I could I could derive these relationships. Power is equal to current times voltage. Well, how does current and voltage give me joules per second? We kind of talked about this in class. Current is a measure of coulombs per second, and voltage is a measure of joules per coulomb. So if I substitute coulombs per second times joules per coulomb, I will see that the coulombs are going to cancel out and leave behind joules per second. Joules per second is power, okay? So where do these equivalent relationships come from? Well, they come from the fact that V equals IR. So I can substitute IR for V. So I times IR is going to give me I squared R. Okay, that's convenient. If I just know the total resistance and the current or the resistance and the current going through here, I'll be able to calculate the power. If I don't know the current, but I'm given the voltage and the resistance, I can then multiply the voltage squared divided by that resistance of that component to get the power of that component. So how does that one work? Well, current is equal to V divided by R. So V divided by R times V is V squared over R. So these are three useful equivalent relationships for power. So if I wanted to calculate the power here, what is the power at, v, at, at that little place? How many watts is that? Okay, so how many watts is that? Well, which formula can I use? I can use something that we just calculated recently. We know that this is three volts, okay? I know that the potential difference across that is three volts because 10 divided by 30 times nine is three volts. So then if I know the voltage and the resistance, I can use that relationship. So then I would say three volts squared divided by 10 ohms, so the power at one, is going to be equal to 9 over 10, which is going to be equal to 0 0.9 watts. So unfortunately, that light bulb in this circuit is going to be quite dim if it's going to be 0 0.9 watts. Okay, let's just double check that that's right. 3 squared divided by 10. Yes, that's 0 0.9 watts. So that light bulb is producing 0 0.9 joules of energy per second, all right? So we're gonna be doing a lot more of these calculations in that workbook that I've given you. And hopefully this video helped you understand how to process everything with series circuits, starting with Kirchhoff's law to determine the resistance, the current, and the voltage across each component. Kirchhoff's law gave us this simplified relationship, R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on and so on for a series circuit, and then using that to then calculate potential differences across components, okay, and then after that, calculating power. My name.